I'm just here with Professor Colin Caro, who is Emeritus Professor of Physiological Mechanics and Senior Research Investigator at Imperial's Department of Bioengineering. Now, Colin is a long-serving and distinguished member of Imperial's academic staff. He recently celebrated his 90th birthday and has served nearly 50 years at Imperial. Um, so firstly, congratulations, uh, Professor Caro. Tell me, what is the secret of academic longevity? Uh, I think it's the, the joy and excitement of, of science. Um, if one's lucky and is able to, to continue with inter interesting research, potentially important research, that, uh, that, that is a disincentive to, to giving up. Now, all the talk in academia at the moment is in multidisciplinary collaboration. Now, this is something you've been doing for many a, many a year. Well, that's true. Uh, with my becoming a, a non-Algerian, 90 years, I've looked, tended to look back slightly, and I, I realised that throughout my career, I've interested, been interested in trying to link as closely as possible biology, physiology, and physical science, mm. uh, even before I came to Imperial. In fact, that's why I came to Imperial, because I had shown that interest. I mean, were you always interested in both um, engineering on one side and then medicine and health on the other side? Uh, well, I, I was born in South Africa. I read physiology and medicine at the University of the Midwaterland in South Africa. Um, and uh, from then on, with a period as a research fellow in, in, in Philadelphia in the States, uh, I, I consistently aimed to, to, to link, link the two. Um, uh, even when at St. Thomas's Hospital, before coming to Imperial, I started a series of lectures which goes on on medicine and, and science. And people like Herman Bondi and so on came came and lectured at St. Thomas's. Mm. Um, so, uh, it's a slightly a minority interest, but, but increasing. Uh, medics tend to be more uh, inclined towards chemistry than towards physics or mechanics. But there, there are always a, a small proportion of medics who, who adore physics and, and mechanics. Yeah, and that was one problem. Through your research, you've made some quite surprising discoveries and insights into how blood flows through arteries. Can you explain a little bit about that, Professor Caro? Yes, it, 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 it's very interesting. The, the, the father of the understanding of the circulation, of course, William Harvey, published his, his book in 1625. Uh, Harvey did a fantastic thing of showing that the flow circulates through the arteries and veins and so on. Uh, but he did not, how can I dare criticize Harvey, he hadn't realized the complexity at all of the flow. The shape of the arteries would determine um, so many things. Um, and in subsequent years, uh, several people have written papers on the shape of arteries and reported that artery A or artery B is curved or helical and so on. But no one seems to have come to the conclusion that helicity or three-dimensionality is a feature of, of the arterial system, um, going down even to quite small, small arteries. Mm. Um, and that was the starting point. It would happen quite quickly to realize, well, if that's the case, we'd better begin to understand mm. flow in a helix. And so um, what you're saying is that um, when blood flows through an artery such as this, it actually takes a helical path round. Is, yes. that, is that correct? That, that's correct. You can see that the aortic arch, the, 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 the heart is, would be here, pumping blood into the aorta. And you can see that that curve is, is not what we call a planar bend, it's all in one plane. It's, it's helical. That, that, that's a fragment of a, of a helix. And the same, the same is very clearly obvious looking at the coronary arteries. These are smaller arteries, but you can see that, that 
almost always, there's a, a helical, helical pending. Mm. And this insight actually led to um, an innovation of yours, is that correct? Yes, it, it, it led to uh, the development of a, a, a novel stent. Uh, stents, if I can show one, are little, little tubes, metallic tubes. Um, that's a conventional stent. It's essentially straight. But it struck me that it didn't make much sense to insert that into an artery, which is done thousands of times, uh, I guess thousands of times, even a, a week or month, uh, to open up arteries blocked by things, when the artery normally is helical. And so, in a, in a crazy idea, I decided to see if we could make a, a helical stent. Uh, that, that is it. This is, this is made of nitinol, which is an alloy. Uh, so it, it's, it's again the same, same stent as this, but here we've imposed a helical ge geometry onto it. Sure. And we could then show, by various techniques, that the flow inside was mixing. And then we, we come into an era where computational fluid mechanics is becoming important. Uh, and uh, I've had wonderful friendships and collaborations with people in mathematics and in also with people in aeronautics. Yeah. And, and the upshot, um, Professor Caro, of, of, of this invention is that the stents need to be replaced less often. Is, is that correct? That's, that's correct. It's been studied preclinically in, in healthy pigs and uh, it was quite clearly evident that the, the, the stent is, is a great invention, but it has problems. It itself promotes a disease called internal hyperplasia, uh, and the artery blocks inside the stent, but progressively th the wall thickens. Uh, and that's a major problem. It's, so the, a huge amount of effort has gone into trying to prevent it. Uh, but quite largely, lately, with the release of chemicals, where they, they, the stent is coated with a chemical, mm. which is an anti-an anti-anti-cancer uh, anti drug, or can cancer drugs, mm. uh, which suppress um, uh, wall, wall thickening. Or thing. um, so that that that's a major effort, and we we decided to see whether geometric change alone would work. Mm. And uh, it was very effective in the pig studies. And then most recently, uh, we've completed a two-year study in patients. Okay. Controlled, randomized trial. And results are uh, highly significant Im improvement. Right, okay. Is, is that the first stage results? Uh, it's the first clinical result, yes. Okay. It, the, 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 re the work is resuming. Now, that was done um, in Germany. Result: the, the work is now going ahead in other locations, including the states. Okay. There's a trial too. And and the potential savings in terms of healthcare costs are significant. Is that correct? Well, some some several billions are spent annually on on the use of stents, and so if the patient can be spared repeat operations, which we normally call for now. Um, um, the, the, the benefits are fairly evident. Mm. And, and, and knowing that now, it must be sort of hugely satisfying looking back on your career, know, knowing that this, you know, this is um, almost fulfilled in terms of its potential. Well, one, one never agrees to be self-satisfied. <laughs> of course, as a scientist. <laughs> but it, 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 is, it is pleasing that, that, that a hunch can... And of course, it, it coincides with my earliest work on, on low, low wall shear because uh, by putting in a, a helical geometry, you've increased wall, wall shear and, and suppressed disease. Mm. So it, it, it's pleasing that, that it doesn't require, seemingly, the use of chemicals that can be achieved by, by geometry. Mm. And it reinforces the idea that there isn't much sense in putting a straight stent in which will reduce the normal curvature. 
T tell me, Professor Caro, um, how have things changed at the college in your time here and, and academia in general? Well, the college is much, much larger. <laughs> we, we, we used to have lunch in a room on, on Queensgate, right next door, with the college secretary, sometimes the rector. <laughs> Um, and uh, it's very different. Uh, it's it's wonderful. It's slightly saddening because I find how few people I know. <laughs> we, we, we've met today two two old friends of mine, but uh, <laughs> um, but it's it's a it's a wonderful, uh, wonderfully exciting place. And I, I want to register the huge pleasure I've had from working here. I've been privileged to work here just a few months short of 50 years and uh, I wouldn't have done anything else. Um, the breadth of interest in science. I, I came here knowing that I'd be talking about volcanoes or, or uh, landslides or something at lunch and that for me was joy <laughs> rather than medicine. Of course. Professor Carroll, you've driven in today um, and you're still active at the college. I mean, do you still get involved in supervising projects or some research as well? Yes, yes I do. I've got four or five students I'm, I'm uh, guiding. Um, in fact, uh, the, the, the Department of Bioengineering uh, it, it led to the formation of what's called the Carroll Renal Group because there's a lot of this sort of field important is important in in kidney disease um, and we meet regularly we're writing pa writing papers um, with colleagues including from aeronautics and so on. and do you do you enjoy the mentorship process is that is that a satisfying one for you oh yes it's, it's, it's wonderful we've had have had and still do have some extremely bright students um, from the UK, from, from the, the EU and so on. Mm. Um, Professor Caro, can you tell me, I mean, what do you see as the most exciting developments in bioengineering in the next decade? What I think is happening gradually is that conventional biology, physiology, is moving towards physical science, that the, the, the merger occurring. That covers all kinds of areas from neurobiology or circulatory biology or genetics. Um, and, and that's a flag I, I wave fairly gently um, that we should reshape um, science, really. Mm -hmm. that, that, that biology shouldn't exist per se. It should be. Uh, biology, physical science linked. Uh, and and it's, it's an inter interesting uh, uh, story because 500 years ago everyone was doing science. And they, they were called whatever they were, they were called. But there was no distinction. So it's come full circle it's in come, a sense. Come full circle. And hopefully with those advances in bioengineering, many more of us will live to Colin's age and still remain active as he is.